Firstly, I want to kick things off by saying thank you for all the awesome suggestions we've had for your new favorite club. Please keep them coming. We've been inundated with some of your amazing ideas for teams from Cruz Azul to Cork City and Hydric Split to Botev Plovdiv in Bulgaria. And I want to keep telling the most interesting stories out there. Fuck it! You can't please everyone! And on that note... We're back and we're in sunny Spain! It's the Unionistas de Salamanca! Your new favorite club, baby. <laughs> Settle in, my friends, for a story of a club collapse, a phoenix rising from the ashes, and an incredible cup run. Perhaps better known for its historic university than football, the small city of Salamanca draws tourists from far and wide with its UNESCO World Heritage, Old Town, Cathedrals, and Renaissance architecture. It's a lovely part of the world. But anyways, for 90 years, Union Deportivo Salamanca were the team representing this place. They mostly kicked around the lower leagues, but spent a small chunk of their history in La Liga, recording their best ever finish in 7th in the top flight back in 1975. But in 2013, with debts of 23 million, the club went into administration and was liquidated. After a lot of back and forth with the authorities, the old club continued under various names after Mexican businessman Miguel Alejandro Miranda bought Union Deportiva's home, the 17,000 Estadio Helmántico, and what remained of the club at auction. You at the back there. You keeping up? Svelio! But while the team, now Salamanca UDS, claimed to be the continuation of the old club, it's Unionistas de Salamanca who are honoring its spirit, only aiming to exist as an homage to UDS. Founded by the fans in the same year as UDS went under, Unionistas are joint owned by over 2,500 socios, one of whom is the Spanish World Cup winning manager, local lad Vicente del Bosque. The members run the club completely democratically, choosing the club anthem and its kit, one vote per member with everything decided that way. And they've enjoyed a pretty remarkable start to life as a football club, winning three promotions in four years to go from regional football to the Segunda B, Spain's third tier, the same level as UDS. Okay, they've lost every time they've met them, so we don't need to dwell on that too much. But yeah, playing on a city-owned pitch, in the shadow of the Helmantico, volunteers create their own ground every match day by decking the place out with Unionistas regalia before putting it all back again afterwards. And, remarkably, in an extremely unlikely scenario, this place just played host to Real Madrid. Once the Copa del Rey round of 32 was made, Unionistas had to fight tooth and nail for the right to play the match at their home, and even turned down 500,000 euros to play at the Bernabeu. Fucking huevos, Salamanca! So, how did they get on? Well, unfortunately, there wasn't the upset to end all upsets. But for a club that's only been playing for five years, they gave the 13-time European Cup winners Real a real scare. And they got the life-affirming moment that marked their arrival on the world stage and made all their hard work raising a club from the ground up worth it through a 57-minute equalizer that sent 4,000 fans wild. They were in it right to the death when Real Madrid finally finished them off 3-1. But it hardly mattered. Oh, and they'd already beaten Deportivo La Coruña on penalties in the second round. So, how are they doing in terms of paying homage to the old extinct UDS? Pretty well, we reckon. From the entire club joining Juan Mata's common goal initiative to the fans singing the club's old anthem in the 23rd minute of every game to mark its foundation in 1923, there is a lot to like about their football popular philosophy, or fandom philosophy. And the 120,000 they they've banked for their game against Real Madrid should give them the platform to keep pushing for years to come. So, vamos unionistas! Thank you for watching, guys, and keep your suggestions coming. This show is all about shining a light on football clubs with the incredible stories and supporters that deserve to be known worldwide. So, hit us up in the comments, and I'll see you next time.